It's our final day here in the United Arab Emirates. And today we've made our way down to Jumeirah Beach to start off our sightseeing day. It's absolutely gorgeous. You would not think that it was January. Look at that, a really nice view here from the beach of the Burj Al Arab, which is the seven star hotel that Harry has agreed to pay for for us to stay for our last night of the trip. So thanks, Harry. You're welcome. <laughs> but yeah, it's the final day. I'm sad that it's the final day. We've done all our theme parks now. Uh, but in this vlog, like I say, we're going to start it down here on the beach. Just come to have a little look around, really. We're not going to stay down here for too long. Just to come and see it, really. This is the main public beach uh, in Dubai. You've got the Wild Wadi Water Park, which is round the back just there. You've got another one of the uh, famous hotels down here. But look at that, I mean, we can't quite get the perspective of how tall it actually is, but if you look at the palm trees just down the bottom there, that building is actually, it's over 600 uh, feet tall. You wouldn't think it. It's even got the helipad on the top, and is that some sort of restaurant or bar on the side there? Who knows? We're probably never in our lifetime going to go in there. Unless we win Euro Millions, you never know. Probably still won't get in there. <laughs> probably still won't get in there, yeah, you never know. But yeah, the beach here is lovely. And look at the colour of the water. In fact, let's go and have a little, uh, I'll take you for a little stroll. Let's have a look. It's very busy down here, they look at the beaches back home, they're all quiet, even in the summer. Look at this. Yeah, look at the colour of the water. Really nice sand here as well. And once we've done down here, I've shown you a few shots, we're going to make our way back into the centre of Dubai. Oh, look at the colour of the water. Yeah, back down into the centre of Dubai, where we're going to be going up the world's tallest building, the Burj Khalifa. That's a really nice shot just from here. Yeah, we've had a really good time at all the theme parks. Make sure you check out all our different vlogs here on the channel. That was it, I've got a wet, uh, a wet shoe for the day. <laughs> yeah, check out all our vlogs. They are all in a playlist uh, here from our trip. We've done parks such as well, all Dubai parks and resorts. We went to IMG World of Adventure, Motion Gate, Legoland, Bollywood. Uh, we went to Ferrari World. We went to Yaz Water World. And we went to Aquaventure as well. Aquaventure is actually not located too far from here. Well, I say not too far. You can just see the top of the Atlantis Hotel. If I zoom in just over there, you see it, there's the top of Atlantis poking out there to the side of that yacht. And Harry said he's also gonna buy us a yacht, which is really nice of him. I can't remember that. Uh, can you not? I thought you were buying the yacht and I was buying the hotel. Oh, there's, are you buying the hotel? Not the United stay. <laughs> wow. But so yeah, I'll show you a few shots from here at the beach. We'll get on the Dubai Metro, because I'm not showing it in any of the vlogs yet, so I'll show you some footage of the Metro. Basically, it's a really clever, uh, driverless system, which is amazing, it really is. It doesn't require a driver. Um, it's only a small system compared to the likes of the Paris Metro or the London Underground and things. But I want to show you it in action because you can actually get right into the front and hopefully it won't be too busy when we're travelling back down there. So we'll get in the front and I'll show you a bit of POV footage uh, from the Metro as we make our way back down into the city centre of Dubai and the Burj Khalifa, which you can just see over there. Really nice clear day for going up there today. Have a zoom in. There it is, all the way over there. Don't worry, that palm tree that's in front of it there, that's a foam mast. The palm tree's not nearly as tall as the Burj Khalifa. It looked like it was then on the zoom. Awesome, yeah, it's going to be a really nice day. We'll also watch the fountains, uh, the Dubai fountains. Show you a couple of shows of that. Uh, along with also having a look around the Dubai Mall as well. So it's going to be a really good day and I hope you enjoy the vlog. I'd say something a bit different, sightseeing day. So I'm now trip here to Dubai. Okay, so after a really nice walk around Jumeirah Beach, which is absolutely gorgeous, wish we had more time to spend there, really. Uh, but we don't, onwards and upwards, we're going into the city centre. We're here at the first Abu Dhabi Bank metro station, which is really, it's the closest metro station to the beach. It's about a five minute taxi ride from here. Taxis, as we mentioned before, are really cheap out here. We've used them on a number of occasions to get to different places uh, here in Dubai and Abu Dhabi as well. Nice and cheap, because obviously, all the oil. So here we are. Now this is a really, really nice metro system. Like I say, it uses driverless trains. Now on the London Underground, you'd be as close as you can to the front. You wouldn't be able to see anything out. Not like there is anything to see anyway, because most of the underground is underground. Here, quite a lot of the system is actually built uh, over ground. As you can see just down there, we're heading down into the city centre. 
There it is, the Burj Khalifa. Can't wait to go up that. Really excited to see what we can see from the top. It looks like a really clear day for it as well. But uh, yeah, they've got this really good system here. Same as what me and Alex saw actually when we went to Hong Kong where they've got the two in queues at the side and then the out queue. But I don't think it runs quite as efficient as it was in Hong Kong in terms of people to start pushing out, don't they? Um, yeah. With it being an automated system. Just to put into perspective where we are in the world, opposite we've got a Lamborghini uh, showroom. Oh, there you go, Lamborghini. Let's have a zoom Just in on that. We forgot we were in this part of the world. So yeah, and uh, as Harry, uh, Harry said he was going to pay for the hotel, he also said he was going to get us a Lamborghini. So thank I'm you. Not liking these, uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice and easy to work out this metro system. Like I say, it's quite short. UAE Exchange is currently the end of the line, which is the furthest that way. Uh, Rashidia is that way and then you've got these stations in the middle that isn't a list of all the stations on the line it just shows you some of them and then it continues uh, on as well the red line being the longest the green line being uh, the shorter one and you can change at Bergem and that's been where we've been changing all the time to get from our accommodation which if you did want to know I did mention it in our second vlog when we did the desert safari uh, but we've been staying at the Sea View Hotel. Really do recommend it. We've had no issues at all uh, throughout the stay. It's been really, really good, that hotel. Like I say, it's a four-star hotel. The rooms and stuff aren't, I wouldn't say a four-star quality, but the, they do what they do the job and the service is definitely four-star. We've had, uh, you know, like fresh towels and everything every day, a bottle of water in the room. There's a mini fridge if you do need it, but obviously that comes at an extra cost. Uh, internet's been quite good there as well. Obviously, I've managed to get quite a few vlogs up whilst we've been over here. So, yeah, Sea View Hotel. Uh, we did it through Booking.com, so check it out for uh, for the best prices on there. Anyway, we'll get on the Metro. It's due in just a couple of minutes. It tells you on the screen just up there. Two minutes to go. And uh, we'll get right in the front just down here as well. You can also travel uh, if you're a lady. There's a ladies section at the back. Uh, on the trains and there's also gold class which is like the well the first class to carriage where you're pretty much guaranteed a seat in there from what it seems as these can get really busy right we'll get on the train i'll show you some shots <laughs> I absolutely love that metro system and a lot of you out there do seem like you enjoy your trains and your monorails and your metros, that is one of the best out there, really enjoyed it and for an all day travel card on that, just travel on it as much as you want, it works out at about £4.50 uh, give or take with the uh, current exchange rate, uh, but yeah about £4.50 for all day travelling or you can get yourself a null card uh, which means you pay for your single journeys, you can use that on buses and I think how he said taxes as well you, you can, can pay thread in the back on the last one we caught it says you can pay with the null card a null card and to get on a bus you can't just get on a bus and pay your money you have to get your null card which is basically like an oyster card and you uh, top it up and Ta -da. That's, that's your null card just there nice little souvenirs okay. and the rta you want to be looking out for that's the uh, roads and transport authority getting good at this aren't i and yeah the rta and they're basically like the government standard sort of for transport and things so if it's got rta on it it's part of you know, the wider picture, so to speak. You're not just getting on in some dodgy taxi or something. So, yeah, we've had no problems with transport at all in Dubai. It's been uh, really, really good. And to get to the Dubai Mall and the Burj Khalifa, uh, to get to at the top, which is the, uh, the name for the, for the experience, what we're going to be doing, um, you can get off the metro at the station, Dubai Mall and Burj Khalifa. So nice and easy, connected by metro. And then you have to get these travelators for literally 10 minutes, if not longer. You go all the way down here and then you think that's the end, then you have to go left and follow it down even more. There's a lot of travelators, but that'll get us to the mall, which is the largest shopping mall in the world, believe it or not. 
it's not a shopping centre. It is a really nice shopping centre. We've got a little fountain package there. But that's nothing compared to what you're going to see later on tonight when I show you the famous, the world famous, Dubai Fountain. Okay, so welcome to the Dubai Mall. Now, as I mentioned just, it is the largest shopping mall in the world with over 1,200 shops, restaurants. And look at this, it's absolutely huge. This is just one of many uh, atriums throughout. You've got this massive color-changing chandelier up there. And just down the bottom there as well, you can see this model. That is actually going to be the new world's tallest building in a few years' time. And uh, last week, we, me and Harry went down there to have a look at the model, and we were speaking to uh, one of the people down there telling you about it. Uh, and we asked, you know, how tall is it going to be? And they're like, oh, there's no confirmed height yet. So I assume they can't tell people uh, because they don't want the surprise to be ruined, and also they don't want another company to go and build something uh, to top it. This just gives you an idea of how huge this place is. Look at all the levels here. And then you've got this massive combination of screens, hundreds and hundreds of screens all put together there to create this amazing structure. And underneath it, you've got the Dubai Aquarium. Now, obviously, we did do an aquarium uh, when we went to Aquaventure over at Atlantis the Palm. Uh, and that was good, but this looks absolutely amazing. Look at the size of that. Bear in mind, we're up on a balcony. Look how small all the people are compared to that. Later on, we'll go uh, on the ground level and I'll show you some more shots of that. But you can just see some people walking through there. That's the exit to it, I believe. There's like a, a, a tunnel that runs all the way through it. Absolutely amazing, isn't it, to see it all? You, you, just, you just can't, like, words can't describe it. I'm speechless talking about it. I've never known a place like it. And I'm going to say this quote again. I promise this will be the last time I say this quote until the end of the vlog, anyway. Before you die, you've got to come to Dubai. You've got to come and see it out here because it's just unlike anything I've ever seen before. Everything's that big, it's crazy. They spend so much money on it and it's beautiful, it really is. Whoa, look at that beauty. Got a nice milkshake from a company called Baskin Robbins. Really, really nice milkshakes. I had one of those when we went to Global Village. So after about a 15 minute stroll through the Dubai Mall, you make it to this really nice area, just here, which is home to the world's tallest building. And there it is, the Burj, oh right, wrong way. And there it is, the Burj Khalifa. The tallest building in the world. Wow. Every time I've walked through those doors this trip, but that's been on a few occasions when I've been down here to see the fountains, which are on the lake just there. It just, it's amazing, it's breathtaking to see it. And the fact that we're going up there in about 45 minutes time is incredible. How's your milkshake? Yeah, sorry, I don't care about the building. Yeah, it's, it's the milkshake. Building. It's nearly gone. We only had that literally five minutes ago. It's nice. It's nearly it's gone. Really yeah, nice. it is really nice. Yeah, ba Baskin Robbins. Do the nice milkshakes. There's ice creams and things there as well. And we got that from the food court at the Dubai Mall. They play a really nice modern soundtrack around here. And the fountain shows, there's about, I don't know, I guess there's about 14, 15 different fountain shows that take place on the lake. There's a couple on in the daytime, but you really want to watch it at night. It's incredible at night. And later on, I'll show you some footage of the fountain show in action. But yes, look at that. What an amazing structure. I mean, at the moment, it's currently got all moving heads, uh, which are lights attached to the side of it. And they've actually put a screen built in. So all the little joins in between the windows, there's like a strip that runs all the way from the bottom all the way up to the top, uh, which has got like a screen built into it. And that's because they did a massive New Year's Eve show here. Uh, well, on New Year's Eve a couple of weeks back. But then they said they were going to run it for a week. And we did manage to see that last week. I thought, let's get down here nice and quick uh, before it uh, finishes. And then they announced on Twitter the other day, oh, we're just going to run it every day until March. So uh, we'll probably get to see that again later on. I'll get some footage for you of it in action. But anyway, we'll come around here later on. Like I said, I prefer it around here at night when it's all lit up and it's got a really nice buzzing atmosphere at night. So we'll make our way back inside and we'll go round to the left hand side. It's through the main door there, round to the left, where we get to the entrance for, at the top, Burj Khalifa. The world's tallest building, let's go. 
Here you go, Harry. How about taking a little souvenir home from your trip here to Dubai? Get yourself a camel. What? Why not? Cam camel milk. I know you love that camel milk. <laughs> Get away. <laughs> you love me, really. Yeah, we're just inside. <laughs> Follow it down this way. It's about a five minute walk from where I was just standing. Down this way to at the top, Burj Khalifa. We get some facts along the way as well. I had a little walk down here the other night. Tells you some facts about the building and construction photos and things on the side. some of the facts along the wall here as we're making our way to the entrance. The amount of steel rebar used for the tower is 31,400 metric tons. Wow, some early construction photos here from January 2004 when the construction of the building began. You can just see here the start of, of that shape. What I really like about this building is the, the style of it, the architecture. It's not just one big tower. It's like loads of little towers all joined together uh, and then rising up from the middle. And obviously you've got the mall and everything that was built around here, the fountains out the front. It's quite hard to make it out from that. It just shows how back in 2004 there was hardly anything around. 12,000 professionals helped build this structure. And here you can see it rising from the ground. 100 stories, an ambitious milestone completed in as early as January 2007. So it reached 100 stories by then, and then I believe they had a few financial issues, because it was going to be called uh, something else originally, and then it ended up being called Khalifa um, to celebrate the, the guy that helped finish it in terms of money, really. The tip of the spire can be seen 95 kilometres away. Wow, that's amazing. That's a nice zoomed-in photo, actually, of the of the spire. Can you imagine standing right on top of there, Harry? Yeah. I'm going to mount on top of there. You're going up there, are you? Yeah. Wow, and all the facts along the side there as well. It looks like we've got some uh, touch screens and stuff up there and binoculars so we can see where we're going. And there's the ticket centre. In terms of tickets, we did book our tickets online. You can pay for it here, um, but I assume that's more expensive. And you can collect your tickets here. So the link will be in the description as usual. Uh, where you can buy your tickets for the Burj Khalifa at the top. You can either go to the 124th floor or the 148th floor. I think I've got that right. It sounds right. Anyway, if not, we'll find out when we go up. There are lots of interesting stuff to read around here. Uh, and like I say, it's not just roller coasters that I'm interested in. I love these sort of experiences and anything to do with technology, really. And it's amazing to think that 12,000 workers put this together and we're now about to go up there and experience it. Let's go up the Burj Khalifa. Okay, so here we are inside the Sky Lounge where we've got some, what are these here? Like little, biscuit, little cake. biscuit cake things to have and we were offered a, a drink as well, weren't we? But we didn't well, have it, camel milk. It, well, no, no, if you remember from the safari store, the man was saying if you're offered half a glass, it means you're, you're welcome. Whereas ah, if you're offered okay. a full glass, it means they don't want you there. And we were offered a half glass. Oh, that's a good sign. It's a good sign. And here's these the very nice tickets, tickets with a random fact on all of them. Go on, tell us the random fact then. So it says, the Burt Khalifa is so tall, you can watch the sunset from the base and then get in the elevator and watch it again at the top. Wow, that's a really fascinating fact. And my fact is, if weighed, the total amount of concrete used in the construction of the Burj Khalifa would equal the approximate weight of 100,000 elephants. Very nice souvenir tickets. And obviously, like I said, just there's two options. You can either go up to the 124th or the 148th. We're going all the way to the uh, to the top one, of course. You've got to, if you're coming out here, you've got to do it. It's a lot more money, like, in terms yeah. of... That's where they get you, though, probably, isn't it, in terms of a company. But, like, it, you've just got to do it. It's yeah, thing. like, we've come all the way over here to see it all and do the theme parks and, and do everything that, like this. So we thought, yeah, why not? Let's go to the top. Uh, I'm not too sure if you're going up to the, uh, to the lower floor, you're still waiting here or not. This is the Sky Lounge. I'm not too sure if you're waiting somewhere else, but there doesn't seem to be many people coming into this bit. <laughs> Thank you. 
So with us going all the way up to the 148th floor, we've got our own tour guide to take us up there. We're going to be there for about 45 minutes on the very top. And then she's going to bring us back down onto the 124th floor, where you can spend as long as you want up there, which is really good. So hopefully stay up there for sunset and watch that. This is really nice. We've just been through the airport style security. And, oh, this is good. I like this. All projection match model this uh... right. Put your hand out in it to uh, interact. Oh, that's really cool. Wow. They don't do things by halves, they only buy. really good times the facts along the way and uh, yeah that whole screen telling you what's inside the building fascinating it really is wow look at that they've even got the doors projection mats 49 50 51 52 now that's a nice feature isn't it we like that goes higher than 85 meters. 85 meters, hang over the tower at Winter Wonderland. Wow. 27 seconds. 170. You can't even count that, it's going that fast. Wow. It's 200 meters and 35 seconds. And for anyone who's wondering, the lifts are manufactured by Otis. Famous lift manufacturer, one of our favourites. No, it's pretty, I like a good Schindler lift though, I must admit. Wow. The light's flashing. Make a lift, nobody's coming out. So we're going to get in this one up to level 125, then we're going to change into another elevator. So just take us up to 148. Let's go.
this guy. Exit will be through that door. We'll change the way to the sky. Yes, please. Yes, please. Can we wait here? Turn around. We wait for the next lift, yeah, to take you higher. Thank you. That was some good ear popping action, that was. Never quite thought of anything like that before. That was fast, that was. Wow. I love the lift, all the projections on the side, going past other famous buildings and stuff at the side. Really nice, that was the audio as well. It's a big experience. You know, it's about 20 minutes since we left the Sky Lounge, and uh, you've gone through like, the tour guys telling you the facts and uh, showing you the construction of the building. Yeah, really nice so far. Off we go, to lift number two. This one. Just a little bit more dense. Level 125. Here we are. <laughs> 148. Not quite as glamorous that lift as the last one, was it? Oh my god, look at all the buttons on the side. <laughs> funny. Ooh, we've got plenty of seating up here. Oh wow, and here we are. Welcome to the world's tallest building. I don't quite. I need to see a window to realise how high up I am. Like I don't. You don't feel. You like don't that. feel it. No. Oh yeah, yeah. Complimentary drink. That orange juice is it? Orange. Mm. Oh, orange juice. It's yeah. a pineapple. This orange juice. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Ah. Okay. That one. Thank you. Ooh. Wow. Look at the view. Absolutely amazing, and as Harry just pointed out, I'm just trying to look where our hotel is. Obviously, we won't see it directly, but the sort of area where we are, we are over that way towards the docks. Where you've got there, you go, you've got the cruise ship just there. Our hotel actually looks out on that. I think our hotel is just down here. You can actually see them taking off in the distance. Yeah, the airport over there. It doesn't feel real, does it? No. <laughs> it really doesn't feel real. Maybe it's real. not. Maybe we went down one floor and we're just looking at a computer screen. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> it is divine. Nothing to surprise me. God, oh, it's amazing. You can see all the islands, all the man-made islands, what you can see out there. We'll uh, have a good walk around there in a second. Like I said, we've got 45 minutes on this level. Wow. Gosh, lots of seats and stuff. It's very nice up here, isn't it? Let's have a little stroll around. Nice bit of wall art there, nice picture. Yeah. It's actually quite a big level up here. If you are scared of heights, you don't feel too exposed to it. There's a lot of areas where you don't have to look out. You go to tall buildings normally and it's just nothing, it's one big empty room. Yeah, it's, you feel more exposed on like the Blackpool Tower or something for if you're scared of heights. How thick's the glass? Hey, oh, recently thick. Yeah, <laughs> good 7 out of 10. Oh wow, there's a lot down to a roundabout down there. A little zoom in. We've picked a really good day to come up here. Obviously we booked this a good, what, three weeks ago. And it is a bit of a risk. Obviously the weather's guaranteed to be good out here in Dubai, but visibility, we've had a few days where it's been a bit foggy, a bit of smog. Um, so we was a bit concerned, but we didn't need to be. Look at that, that's the world islands out there where they're actually recreating the world out of all them different islands and nothing's really been built on them yet over there but I'll have a little zoom in for you so you can see. Oh, incredible. Oh, you can see over there this morning. Ah, there you go, yeah, Dromira Beach down there. Atlantis the Palm, you can see the eye down there which is in construction all the way down to the marina. Right down there. And that there's the Palm Islands, that's where Atlantis is right at the end, the big hotel there on the right hand side. Aqua Ventures down there, we did a vlog from there, so check it out. The Burj Al Arab, the seven star hotel. But yeah, it's nice because you're not forced to go to the edge if you are scared of heights. I mean, obviously like in roller coasters and theme parks, heights aren't, don't really affect us at all, do they? Uh, but the lift, I, I did feel some, uh, felt the force in the lift, did you? Yeah, it's that first one, that second one wasn't it? But... Yeah, yeah, that first one, like, in what, 90 seconds we went from on the ground to, to up to where we are. Up to 124, wow. <laughs> See what I mean about a bit of smog over there, right in the distance. 
obviously Dubai Parks and Resorts, you can see this from last night when we came back from there, and you can see it all lit up at night. There you can see the wheel. Yeah, the eye down there, the marina. Gosh, it's crazy. And this uh, this river, what runs in here, they actually built it, that's man-made. They built it, it starts over there, runs all the way around here, and then connects around with where the, uh, towards the fountain area is. Here we go, we can just see the side of the fountain. Do you see it down there? So obviously this is the front of the building around this way. Hello, Sushi. Oh, here we go, and here's some of the lighting. So obviously, like I mentioned at the bottom, they've been running the New Year's Eve show, and there is hundreds of moving heads all around the side. And here's one of them just attached onto the side. Oh wow, look at that! <laughs> I would not fancy having that job attaching them. There's hundreds of those all the way up. God, and I thought they were a lot smaller than that as well. They're huge. Oh, that's crazy! And they run all the way down here for the big light show. We'll watch that again tonight. I'll get some footage of it for you. Got to be done, hasn't it? And there's a look down towards the fountains. Get a good view of all the mechanism and everything. Oh, there we go, that's the building, what I thought that was just around the corner. The apartment block looks very similar. All owned by Imar Properties. There's a lot of things that are owned by Imar Properties and they built all of this as well. Yeah, I had a little walk around there all the other night. It's gorgeous all around there. Really nice hotels, bars. Wow. So we've got a little gift shop up here as well. Got some pens, got some resins there. Yeah, nice how much for a pen. Can't see a price on there. Nice jewellery. And here we can go outside. Okay, we're now on the world's tallest outdoor observation deck. Wow, there's no wind at all, is there? There isn't, sir. Really surprising. We've picked a really good day. Yeah, get as many pictures as you can do. Here are some more lights in here for any uh, lightning enthusiasts. Look at them big spots. Wow, that's crazy. And then you've got all them moving heads all up the side. Like I said, this show's been extended till March now, but God, I can't believe it. Like. There's hardly any wind at all. I just can't believe we're up here. Like this is just such a. We wanted to do it on the last full day of the trip because we've been we've seen this building every day of uh, this trip. Whether it's been at the bottom watching the fountains, whether it's been on the metro traveling to one of the parks. I just wanted to build up that anticipation, and it's been well worth doing that instead of coming up and thinking, oh, we've done it on day one. Uh, Same as the last day. I really recommend doing that if you do plan a trip out here to Dubai. Get a really good view of that fountain package. Bear in mind, when you're down there at the bottom, the fountains feel absolutely huge. And from up here, all you can see is the, the layout of the fountains. Didn't even realise that was the layout of them, actually. You got, what, three circles there and two on that side. And then that's the bridge just where I was having me, uh, having me milkshake all the way down there. Wow. So you got the Dubai Mall just down there, and I think that's the area where the food court is, that big square in the middle. So you looked out the windows and it was like a, a dome, so I'm pretty sure that in the middle there is the food court. Wow, we've just had some uh, professional photos done over there as well, and uh, how many photos do we have? About 20, it was like one, two, three, smile. Last one now. Yeah, last one, last one. <laughs> There's the uh, shadow of the Burj Khalifa. That gives you a good idea of how tall it is. Look at the shadow, all the way over to there. And yeah, when we went out on the desert safari back on day two, we went past a, a big sand mound. And I was just spotted that if we zoom in, I'm not sure how well that's going to pick it up. Right out there on the right hand side of the screen. Just go to show how much expansion room there is here, though, in Dubai, doesn't it? So much empty space, and really, the city doesn't go that far back. It's all just desert, and there's so much room to, to build and expand. Yes. I'd say this is floor 148, but I believe it's over 200 floors. And there's another couple of bits there, but I assume they're either private residences or they're not for public access, unfortunately. Unless you fancy going up there and cleaning the antennas and stuff. I'll climb up the side. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy though, because this is the edge. Like, if this glass was to break, you're straight off. Like, there's no like ledge at that side. You are straight down. God, that's amazing. 
It's a really nice day for it though, really clear. So as I mentioned, just outside, it's got the Guinness World Record for the highest outdoor observation deck at 555.7 metres, that's 1,823 feet, on the 148th floor of the Burj Khalifa. Wow. So this observation deck opened in 2014, so it's only a few years old really, well, four years old. Back inside then now, more complimentary drinks and things. It's got a very nice finish inside here, I love this central piece. Right, I'll show you a few more shots from up here at the top. This really gives you a good idea on how long that travelator is from the Dubai Mall and Burj Khalifa Metro Station, which is located there, and of course where we are now. You see that corrugated roof down there, and then it gets a bit more fancy down here where they've added some more stuff to it to make it look better. Yeah, that gives you a good idea how long that travelator is. So we're getting back down now from 148. Hands are one, two, five. You feel a bit on your ears actually, even going that, that little bit, can't you? Yeah. You enjoy that at the top. Oh, it's been amazing. It's been really Absolutely. nice. We've probably up there for about 90 minutes or so as well. We've sat there for the past half an hour on a, on the benches in the middle, really nice. Come back, Miss Wilson. Start from the side, thank you. Obviously, this is going to be quite a bit bigger in terms of the floor space of this up here. You can already see, look at that, it goes all the way down that way and all the way this way. So, you should be able to get some different angles. Hello! You want? Yes. 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 Okay, you can actually notice quite a difference from that floor down here on 125. The buildings around don't, you don't look quite as far away from them. Still really tall, obviously, but not quite as far away as it was just. And we've got these. Wow, look at that. Oh, you can zoom. Can zoom in. Oh, there you go. Our hotel's not far from there, is it? There should be another big ship around there, the, the Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a little zoom in. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, our hotel is like on this block somewhere down here. Cruise terminal. I like how it shows you where things are. There you are. Yeah, because we walk past that to get to our metro station, don't we? That we big do. billboard there. So we're staying somewhere on there. Yeah, it's huge on this level, really big. And you've got these quite cool hanging seats on these chains, some really nice lighting here as well. The overall product is really good what they've got here. Some sort of VR headset there. Please scan your ticket to begin the experience. We've got a bit bigger gift shop here, just uh, from what the lady was saying, just there's a huge gift shop down at the bottom. This is quite a good size though. Scan your ticket to begin. Let's have a look, shall we? Here's a look at some of the merchandise. Then we've got this really nice embossed mug. Loving that. 80 dirhams for that. It's not too bad. It's actually cheaper than at some of the theme parks that we've visited. Not too badly priced at all. What have you got there? It's like a little glitter glow with the perk in the middle. Oh yeah, it's got it in the middle and it's got the branding on there. At the top. Mm. Along there. Put that <laughs> back on the right one. It's a lot busier on this level. I'd definitely recommend spending that extra money and getting right to the top. Absolutely love this idea. So you can buy a certificate, which is only 69 dirhams, which is from a personal converter. Over here. That's not too bad, really. For something nice. Obviously, I don't think you get the frame, but you can put it in one. Go to B&M Bargains back home and get yourself a frame. And yeah, just to say you've completed an assessment. 
descent to the world's tallest build in the Burj Khalifa. I think that's a really nice day. I'm going to get one of them. I'm going to get one of the mugs, and maybe one of the resins, but I might not get one from here. There's quite a few different shops uh, in Dubai Mall what sell the resins, so I might get one of those. That's really nice as well. You've got like all the projections there on the floor. There is also the 124th floor, the one just below this one you can go round. So we're going to have a look down there. We can assume that you can go between that floor and this floor. We're going to find out in a second. I think the plan is to sort of wait it out up here for a bit, find some seats uh, for an hour or so, and, and wait for that sun to set, really. So obviously we've paid a lot to come up here. We want to see it at night as well, really, or at least as all the lights are starting to come on anyway and before we go back down and see the fountains and things. So that was the plan. That's why we booked to come up at the time we did. So some nice t-shirts and things. No, it's just too badly priced, though, like I say. Not bad, 69 for a t-shirt. I mean, at the parks there were more than that. It's good going, that. You have to pay extra for these uh, VR experiences. Even though it says scan your tickets, you have to pay more. Ooh, this is very snazzy. We've got a nice chandelier there with some steps, which take you down to floor. 124, which has got an outdoor observation deck. Quite a big one by the looks of it as well. Yeah, a lot more crowded than uh, what we had just up at the top. This is nice though. Seems that the gift shops get bigger the further you go down. This one's even bigger than the one on that next floor. I assume when we get to the bottom, there's going to be a huge one. So here you can build your own Burj Khalifa for 103 dirhams. Now, as it comes in this little box, nice and easy to transport back home as well. Something like that. The fact that you know it's nice and flat. Yeah, oh, that's good. That's oh, that's clever. There's the Great Pyramid. Got even the Eiffel Tower. Blimey, I mean, a bit of the Eiffel Tower and that feels ridiculously high. I mean, look at this, how tall it is, wow. And think what, just we was on one of these floors just here, just below 600, and we was right at the top. So what, double the height of the Eiffel Tower. Mm, I like how it's got that on the back. Loads of good merchandise opportunities and uh, not that expensive at all, really, for one of the most popular tourist attractions in the world. In the world. Your Lego stuff. Lego. Christmas baubles. Burj Khalifa on. Add that to your Christmas tree. Hey, you've got another moving head up there as well. Like I say, all the way down the side of the building. Get your caps, that's quite a nice one. Nice simple design. Modelled there by Harry Turnstiles in Dubai. Very nice. <laughs> They've even got like their own mascot here as well. Uh, Mr. Burge plush toy, 53A AD. There we are. Take one of them home for you, Charlotte. You'd probably like one of them actually. Crooked. Oh. Crooked though. Is it supposed to be crooked? I never think so. <laughs> A bit broke, and we got some nice pictures over here as well. That canvas. Just on the outdoor viewing deck, then here on the 124th floor, and these are some of the lasers inside here. What are used for that New Year's Eve show? And then you can just see there as well, we was right up there just, and then you got all the moving heads all the way down. There you go, you can see them pixel strips are all lit up now. Assume they're getting them ready for tonight. I can see them being on here for a lot of years though. They've put, gone to the effort of installing all that. It's a lot busier down on this floor. There's a lot more space, but there's a lot more people. I definitely prefer it at the top. As the sun starts to set here in Dubai.
Sun goes down from the Burj Khalifa in Dubai in our final vlog on the final day of our trip. All the memories, all the theme parks, all the coasters, and the sunsets on that dream. It's been beautiful, it really has. Wow. Wow, amazing to see the sunset from here at the Burj Khalifa. And we're now looking down on the Dubai fountain. Like I said, I will show you this when we go back down onto ground level. But I just thought I'd give you a bit of a unique angle on it from up here. Obviously, you can see the setup from it. The fountains actually look tiny um, from here. When you're down there, it's a huge, fantastic production. Wow, and also over here at the Dubai Mall, not really picking up that one on the camera yet until it gets pitch black, but there's strobe lights everywhere over the entire mall's roof. Look at that, absolutely incredible. Only in Dubai would you get something like that. Strobes everywhere. And yeah, you get a good view of your fountains down there. It'd be nice if they played the music up here, but I suppose you don't really get the same impact. It's just nice to see it from up here though. It's more about the light show to be honest. Let me have a little zoom in, see what see what this oh there you go, there's the twinkles in the lake. Let's see what this zoom can do, shall we? Wow, look at that. There you go, there's some of the big ones. It makes you realise the scale of that shot actually when you see it from above. And how many lights there is as well. Hundreds of lights all in the floor. Um. So you saw some shots there of the Dubai fountain just from the bottom of the Burj Khalifa. And uh, like I said, we will go back down there. And as I was saying, uh, it would be quite nice if they played the music in here. They actually did. Uh, you couldn't hear it very loud from where we were standing. But uh, yeah, they do play the music to the fountain show, which runs from 6 o'clock to 11 o'clock every 30 minutes. So it's definitely worth planning that into a visit up here to the Burj Khalifa. It's getting dark now. We are going to be going back down soon, but we thought we'll stay up here and just get a few shots uh, within at night. It's Dubai, it doesn't really go pitch black here. There's so much light pollution and things everywhere. But yeah, that was amazing, watching the sunset, seeing the fountains from up here. It's been a really, really enjoyable experience, hasn't it? It's been fantastic. Really it's so nice. nice to have been up here and we can say we've done it. So. We've been there, we've done that. We're going to get the certificate, I think, both of us. Harry's going to get some uh, playing cards as well. Cool. But yeah. all merchandise you see here is available down at the bottom as well. So the certificates, actually, they're on display here, but you can't get them here. Uh, you have to get them down on the ground floor. So we're going to do that when we go back down and have a look. I assume the gift shop will be huge. Yes, yeah, so we'll end our visit at the top here uh, with a few more shots and then we'll get the lift back down. See you at the bottom. Yeah. But I actually need to unpack and repack because everything I, I threw everything in my bag. Oh, I, I see. Let me 
we left over that. Just think about it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't know. We're not leaving that early tomorrow. 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 We're not leaving that early tom
It looks good. How many rooms? 15 rooms, did it say? It's 15 rooms, but I only said it lasted about 15 minutes, which at least it, it suggests it's like a free flow style. Maybe, but we've come all this way. There's, there's a stair attraction. I think it'd be worth having a go. So it's about, well, it's out about 20 quid though, doesn't it? It's a pricey one. It is a bit pricey, we'll have to see. Well, uh, yeah, I do like the look of it though. I think it is something to do with the one that ING, isn't it? Or developed by the same people same, looking at same it. Same Yeah, yeah, very similar to Sol. A lot smaller, but just as detailed. So we'll find out. Obviously, I won't be able to film inside, but if we do go in, I'll share a review when we come out. We decided to go into Hysteria here in Dubai at the mall and in terms of an attraction and the theming and I actually got some really good scares I thought it was good like it wasn't amazing but it wasn't poor either some of the theming in there was really good and for me to go in these scare attractions and get three or four jump scares to me that's a sign that they've done something right um, 20 pounds is a lot of money bear in mind let's think about Scarefest at Alton Towers where you'll pay uh, well, it's about 20 quid and you'll get three scare mazes. Uh, obviously, 20 quid, I was expecting more in terms of uh, the length to it. It was quite short. It was probably in there five minutes and that was me going at a really slow pace through attractions. Um, so yeah, 20 quid is a lot of money to spend. With us being into this industry and with us designing a couple of scare attractions and things before, I really wanted to do it to see what it was like. And it was worth it. I'm glad we did go in. Not worth 20 quid. I'd say maybe... £12 or so, I would say was a fair price for that. In terms of actors, there was probably three actors in there, so not much at all. But they did keep coming around the different corridors and doing scares and things. But for me, it wasn't really the actors what made that. It was the theming. There was some really unique stuff. What I hate with scare attractions these days is when you've got hospitals, uh, you know, surgeons, all that kind of stuff. The standard things in there, there was some very different style stuff that was nice. It was like going around a house and you had like a, a toilet scene. Uh, there was lots of good theming inside there and I enjoyed it. I don't think Harry I, I'm enjoyed it as much. I was leading the group there and say that, there was only two of us in, in the group, which is so good. The thing is though, you got scared, which is great, but I always think in a scare attraction you need to scare everyone and I wasn't guessing anything. Like, no. I'll give it to them. There was a few good animatronics in there. That yeah. Were like very, very well themed. But in terms of value, I probably would have paid £5 for that. I didn't think it was worth no. a near that amount of money. I think maybe because I was leading, I was going through like the fear flaps and stuff. Uh, and there was some really trippy lighting in there, like the strobes. Like, I'm fine with strobes, uh, you know, when they're going at a decent pace. In there, some of the lighting, uh, especially there was a room with like three dolls. And that was incredible, like the scale of it. Uh, yeah, it was, a, it was quite a small room with these three dolls and the lighting was, it was strobes, a few different strobes in there all going at a different time. And it made it really hard to judge, uh, you know, what was real and what wasn't in there. Like a, a couple more actors than that would have made it uh, a lot better, but I'm glad we did it. Would I pay to go and do that again? No, I wouldn't, but there you go. You've heard a fair, uh, an honest review from that from two people and uh, two different style of experiences. But like Harry said, there were some good animatronics in there. Like, what were they? They were really strange there was, there was robots. Robots. Yeah, they were the Victorian dolls, which kind of leaned forward and jolted a bit, so you didn't know whether they were people yeah. or not of the lighting. And then there was, um, Almost like a, a shop mannequin, but more like kind of steampunky rustic. So it was like the, the head of the stick, um, and they they just kind of looked side to side. But they were they were good. But mm. like say, it just the, and the roof wasn't themed. The roof was wasn't themed. Nets. Yeah, there was a lot of camo nets. I mean, you weren't walking around thinking, "Oh, there was massive gaps in the ceiling," because there was a lot to look at ground level. But yeah, the roof wasn't themed. There was a lack of smoke and stuff, I suppose, because that's in a we're in a shopping centre at the end of the day. Uh, but yeah, I enjoyed it. Like I said, I'm glad we went in. 
Uh, it didn't exceed expectations, but I wouldn't say it was poor either. It was just kind of what I was expecting, but for the price, I thought it might be a little bit longer than what it was. But they said 15 rooms. There probably was 15 rooms there, and there was a big squeeze as well, uh, you know, like where you go through and, and it's tight whilst you walk through. Uh, that was good. There was like a little uh, bridge in there, some effects. There was a chainsaw in there that wasn't very good at all. The chainsaw was poor. Uh, but yeah, it was okay. It, I, I quite enjoyed it. 20 quid. Um, you know, expensive, but we've done it. We're only going to be here once in a lifetime, slash a couple of times maybe in our lifetime. So we've done it, but will I do it again? Definitely not. <laughs> It's amazing walking around here after being up there, up the Burj Khalifa. Crazy. Love the atmosphere around here at night as well, playing all that music and everyone's waiting for the fountain shows every half an hour. But before we do watch a fountain show, we're going to have a lap around this lake yeah, just here. I don't think many people realise that you can actually do a full loop round because you get to the end of this here and it sort of all splits off. But the other night I was having a bit of an explore uh, when, back when Harry was ill last week. I had a little walk round and you can actually do a full loop around this. You can go over the bridge at the back and then there's some like um, dandelions around the back, some steel dandelions where you can get some really nice shots with them in the foreground and the Burj Khalifa in the background. <laughs> and also there's like a little platform where you can go and watch the fountains from, where you can pay to do that. It's only a few quid, that's quite cool. And um, there's also these boats, and I did look at the price of them, and the boats don't work out too expensive either. You think with it being a major tourist hotspot, they charge you a fortune, but they weren't too bad at all. I'll have a look at the prices and uh, show you them when we go round. This is actually one of my favourite viewpoints of the Burj Khalifa, because obviously you get all these apartments and restaurants here in the foreground, and then the structure just there, and you can see them LED strips all the way up. Basically about 15 minutes before they do the fountain shows, they have the strips on doing some advertising for Imar, which is the company that built all of this section and a lot of the apartment blocks around Dubai. But yeah, look at that. And just like that, it fades away. It is amazing. We'll continue our walk around. It's not, it's not like a direct path all around the bottom here. You have to verge off and you go like through this uh, entrance area to a hotel, then merging around the back. And there's something really nice. For anybody that's a big fan of tram systems, I'll show you something quite nice around there as well. It's like a completely different world. Just a short five minute walk from the hustle and bustle of the Dubai Mall and where the fountains are. We've literally walked five minutes around the corner uh, across where that hotel was just, and look where we are. There's literally two people down there and just me and Harry. Me up in and <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? Like, just thought I'd show you guys this. Literally, I was just exploring around here uh, last week one night and I thought I'm gonna have to come around here and show this for you guys because not everybody likes crowds and, and these highly populated areas. And if you just want to get away from it all for a little bit, just come and sit around here. I mean, I think it's more like a, you know, it's all the residential areas. I mean, you've got all these different apartments and things, but it's still a public area to walk around. You know, there's no signs or anything saying you can't be around here. Uh, so why not? And then this brings you straight back round uh, on the other side of the lake where you can walk past the fountains and everything again. So yeah, it's really nice. I'm a little treat for you guys. You're just up there as well. I hope you're all excited. So there you go. There's your nice, tranquil, peaceful area. And then here we go, back on the main road, and here's my little surprise for you. For anybody that loves heritage, now, I say heritage, this is actually replicating like an old heritage tram. It's only actually been here for a few years, but I thought anyone who's a big fan of anything like this would really enjoy seeing it. I mean, me personally, you all know that I love my metro systems, trains, transportation. I find this incredible, like they've replicated one of these nice traditional trams, similar to what you can find in San Francisco. Uh, on the streets, but yeah, how nice is that? And it actually runs as well, the garage is just here, behind us, I'm not too sure on the hours, I think it's daytime only, but yeah, it runs all down the track, there's a track running all the way down here, and for doing a bit of research on Wikipedia, looks like they're gonna be uh, expanding the line for this soon. I was hoping to get on this today at some point, but we've not had a chance to, but thought, yeah, we'll come and see it parts up here, how nice is that, the Dubai trolley. So it's upstairs as well. 
So that'll definitely be on the cars next time I come here. So go and have a go on that. Really, really nice. Also kind of similar to what you see at uh, Disney as well, down the um, Buena Vista streets at California Adventure. And all the Christmas lights are still up. If I haven't uh, mentioned it enough in the vlogs, Merry Christmas, everyone. 340-something days early, I don't know. Or 20-something days late. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> Some really nice Christmas lights down here. This is like the main shopping street, uh, and this leads back around towards the fountains as well. And we've got some really cool little features about at the moment. We've got these snails all lit up. God, we're so touristy, aren't we, today? We've done all the touristy stuff. It's been really nice. I've enjoyed it. Now all the snails climbing up palm trees. And these are nice Christmas lights all around here. And all the palm trees, look, you, got, you can even walk through all them trees over there. And if we turn right here, back onto Burge Plaza, this takes us down the steps. There's all sorts of different animals here, all lit up, which is quite cool. And some really nice views of the Burj Khalifa. So yeah, that's how you can do a full lap around this area if you do plan to visit Dubai. And this is actually a really good perspective of the building itself. You can really see how tall it is from here. And get to see all these cool little animals. They are. There's the fountain in the distance. Oh, we've just finished, does it? Oh no, there we go. Big crocodile over there. These are really good sculptures, what they've made. Then you got all these. Oh, are they wolves or dogs? Wolves. All on the side. Really nice. I assume they're here just temporarily. Some sort of exhibition of some form. And this is where you get on the boats down here. So let's have a look at the prices, just so you guys can see them. I remember looking, it wasn't too much for the boats. And these park up right by the fountains, if you go on it when they're happening. The boats operate daily from quarter to six until quarter past 11 every 30 minutes. The Dubai Fountain Lake Ride. Where was the price here? Yeah, I did see it the other day. I'll have a look and get back to you on that one. £13 it works out at for the late ride, so not too bad at all. We've got some more snails climbing up the palm trees. Fountain start in 15 minutes. Wow, look at that. The fact they've attached. Loads of moving heads. I think I, can, well, I counted about 150. And that was missing some from the top because I couldn't really tell how many there was. Plus putting all these screens in. It's mental. It really is. No wonder they wanted to run this show for more than one night. Yeah, I'll show you some footage later on at the end of the vlog of that show in action and we'll stand somewhere central to it and, and get to see that. There was a lot of complaints apparently on New Year's Eve because there was a lot of people standing around wherever they could see the Burj, but obviously the show is only on one side. It's like from this angle, for example. It depends how fussy you are. Me personally, I won't want to watch it from here because obviously the pixels end there, don't they? You want to be over that way where you can see it straight on. It depends how picky you are really watching shows. Some people wouldn't mind seeing it from this angle, but for me, I like to be dead on point when watching something like that. Incredible. So this bridge just literally takes you back round. And then it's quite a big walk. It's about a half an hour walk if you don't stop. But I do recommend stopping. It's nice to take in the atmosphere. You walk all around the back just round here. And there's some sort of festival going on, it seems, on this piece of grass. It's been uh, set up the other day when I walk around here. So let's have a look at that and see what's going on. More snails. And there's them uh, dandelions down there, look. <laughs> Soft as your skin. Some sort of festival going on, all stalls and Soft live music. Got a really nice atmosphere around here though. Dear, Loads of stalls selling crafts and things. It's quite nice. Just saying to Harry off camera, it's so strange walking on grass over here when you're so used to seeing sand and desert and the fact that that's still there underneath this facade. Crazy. Nice balloons, look at those. Better than Disneyland.
really is so nice walking around here and these are some of my favourite things around here actually, these dandelions with some really good lighting on. Just down there as well like that bloke's doing and you get a, a good photo over there under the lights. How cool are them, I got some really nice shots the other day with these in the foreground and then the Burj Khalifa in the background, I mean look at that for a really nice angle. Gorgeous isn't it? Anyway, it's nearly time for the fountains. Yes, I know that's what you've all been waiting for. The Dubai fountain is absolutely incredible. Obviously, I've seen some huge fountain shows out there. Uh, I remember going to Las Vegas and watching the fountains at the Bellagio. That's a very impressive show, uh, which I really enjoyed. Uh, I've seen at Quinora F Telling, that's another big show. But these are in another league. They're absolutely crazy. In fact, they're over 900 feet in length. And they start over there and the end just over here. They can shoot water up to 500 feet in the air, uh, which is incredible. And um, they make some really loud noises as well. There's some good effects and things on there. You've got loads of lights, hundreds of lights all built into the lake. Uh, I think there's about 20 something colored lights, which is used for some of the shows, such as uh, Thriller, which is the one that I'm gonna show you now. Uh, but yeah, it's absolutely incredible. So anyway, I'll show you some highlights now for one of the fountain shows here outside the Dubai Mall. It's a completely free show, it's lots of different performances, and it runs every half an hour from six o'clock until 11 o'clock. What more could you want? You could even come and do exactly what we've done, walk around the lake for an hour, stop in a few different places and watch the different fountain shows. Enjoy the show. just saw there some fantastic footage from the Dubai fountain. I love that to bit, it's brilliant. And I've been here quite a few nights watching the shows now and still seeing new ones. Uh, it's incredible, it really is. And like I say, I showed you some footage just of Thriller uh, that I filmed the other night. And yeah, that's so far my favorite one. But we've just watched another one uh, here, which was a, it was a foreign song, but it was more of an instrumental type. It was like African style music. I really liked that one. It was short and sweet though. Uh, whereas Thriller's what, about five or six minutes. Uh, that one there, it was only three minutes, but it was a good one. And we had a nice use of some of the coloured lights as well. There's not loads of coloured lights. Uh, it's mostly the white lights. Uh, but yeah, we had some blue at the start and at the end of that one, which was nice. But uh, yeah, no matter what show you're gonna get, and no matter where you watch it from, it's still very impressive. Yes, I've got my favourites, and I've got my favourite uh, places to watch it from, uh, but no matter what, it's incredible. And the best thing, it's free. All this, what you've seen around here, is free to come and see. And you can just walk around here, and the mall, it is gorgeous, it really is. And I really don't want to go home. I'm so sad. These are the last few minutes of video footage from our trip to Dubai. And I can't stress enough, if you've not already, go back and watch all our other vlogs from all the different theme parks. But not just the parks. We went on a desert safari. We went on a camel. We've done so much this trip. And it's getting sad. It's nearly it. It's been a life experience. It has been a life experience. And it's somewhere I definitely will come back to. When that may be, who knows? It'll definitely be when there's probably more theme parks around, uh, even more to see. For all I know, the next tallest building in the world could be here and built by them. Who knows when it will be, but uh, no matter what, you've got to get out here and come and see it. You really have. Absolutely incredible. Anyway, to wrap up this vlog, I'm going to show you some footage now of the New Year's Eve light show. Now, Dubai has always done fireworks for New Year, much like London does on the London Eye every year. It's a staple thing. But to bring in 2018, Dubai wanted to try something a little bit different uh, on the Burj Khalifa. Instead, they attached hundreds of moving heads, which are basically big, expensive lights to the side. Uh, all the way down, they added all them screens that you saw. That's it, give us a honk. Uh, you had all the screens added in all down the front and between the windows. And me personally, I think it's a really impressive show. Yes, I still think fireworks on there will be really good to see. 
but fireworks you can see pretty much anywhere. With this, it was very unique, uh, and it was great to see it. And we're our third time watching it tonight. I'm going to share it now with you guys. So, hope you enjoy the next few minutes of highlights, and then we'll uh, wrap up our day here in Dubai doing all the sights. It's been a really good day. We started on the beach, we're ending by the fountains, and yeah, Happy New Year once again, everyone. It's still January, I can still say Happy New Year. Uh, here you go, we'll see you after the show and we'll wrap up the vlog. What a place, and what an experience. show really just sums up what Dubai is like. It's extravagant. It's bigger and better than anywhere else in the world. And to any technicians out there, anybody that's into theatre and productions, they'll understand how much effort and how much work went into that show. Absolutely breathtaking. One of the best things I've ever seen. And that does wrap up our series of vlogs here from Dubai. Before we came out here, we had no idea what we were going to experience. And seeing everything, we've been in the world's largest shopping centre, we've been on the world's fastest coaster, the world's tallest building, the world's largest synchronised fountain display. The list goes on, it's been incredible. And you need to go back and watch all the different vlogs and see all our different memories from this trip. It's been amazing. And me and Harry Turnstiles, we've seen so much together, we really have. Just thank you really for a really amazing trip and taken uh, expectations to the next level I think. It has, hasn't it's going it? It's to be hard to beat this. It is, yeah. Like it's just been incredible to see it all. And thank you so much for the entertainment, the memories. And like I say, I've done a lot of travelling, I really have, but me and Harry have experienced so much together this trip and I've never done so many like world record breaking things and yeah, this one really nice place to wrap it up outside the Dubai Mall and the world's tallest building. And just thank you really, thank you for watching us thanks for enjoying the uh, journey with us obviously it's great filming these vlogs for us to watch back as well uh, that's one of my main reasons of doing it I can't wait to look back on this trip and think God we were there and we went up the Burj Khalifa and we went on Formula Rossa we've done so much and next time we're here this place could have developed even more and it's it will exciting. have developed even more exciting. it is exciting don't be put off by what you hear with the laws and things get out here behave and come and see it. You need to see Dubai before you die. And I'm going to leave you with that quote. Thank you very much for watching this series of vlogs. They're all in a playlist, so check out the playlist for all the different videos from all the different theme parks, attractions, and don't forget to see our other things as well. If you've enjoyed this sightseeing vlog, check out our desert safari. It was amazing, one of the best experiences I've ever had in 24 years on this planet. Harry, it's been emotional, but I'll see you in Blackpool. I'll see you in Blackpool. See you in Blackpool. <laughs> I can't wait to be back in Blackpool, I yeah, tell you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for joining us. And from both me and Harry, that means it's time to cue those credits. See you later. See you later, guys. Dubai. And goodbye.
Thank you.